Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the wicker throw, which I absolutely love at the moment. I love blankets that are worked in this moss stitch. Uh, they have a wonderful weight to them, solid, they're smooth, and you can do a lot of fun things with color. Uh, when you're working in the moss stitch. If you want to check out a couple of other blankets that I've worked in the moss stitch, you can check out the Benjamin Throw or the True Colors Throw, both of which are here on my YouTube channel. So today we're learning how to crochet the wicker throw. Uh, I have worked this blanket using a worsted weight yarn. I will be using the Heartland yarn by Land Brand. It's super soft. It's a 100% acrylic yarn. And for my blanket, I used 10 balls of my color A, which was the Grand Canyon color. There's about 251 yards per ball, so I needed 10 of those. And then two to three balls of Black Canyon, which is my color B. And that really depends on how much of a fringe you would like to add to the bottom of your blanket. You're also going to need a five millimeter or an H8 crochet hook and links to these items can be found in the description of this video. Also in the description of the video, you'll find a direct link to the free written instructions and some uh, where you'll also find more photos on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to take a look around. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Our blanket today is worked in rows, so we're going to start by taking our color A and by making a slip knot. Now my finished blanket was a total of 48 by 52 inches. So if you'd like to work a similar size blanket, you're going to begin by chaining 235 chains. If you would like to change the size of your blanket, and I'm actually going to do that here today, I'm just going to work a small swatch so you can see how the blanket has worked. So if you'd like to change the size, all you need is a foundation chain with an odd number of stitches. Today I'm going to start by chaining 35. For the full blanket, you'll want to chain 235 stitches. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin row one by skipping the first two stitches and working a single crochet into the third chain from your hook. I'm working into the back bumps only of my foundation chain simply because I love the finished edge on the other side of the foundation chain. So single crochet into that third chain from your hook, chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet into the next. You're going to repeat that all the way across, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next, all the way across where you will work your final single crochet into that final stitch. At the end of row one, you're going to chain two and turn your work. For row two, you're going to skip that first stitch and into the next chain space, you're going to work a single crochet. Now that's traditionally how the moss stitch is worked. Uh, I will give you a little uh, bit of a tip. I found that when I did that, that there would be a gap between this stitch and the chain, which I didn't like in my blanket. So what I actually do for this second row only is that instead of working it into the space, I actually work the stitch into the skipped chain on my foundation chain. So I'm kind of working over top of that space and into the foundation chain, single crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch, Instead of working into the space, as you normally would, and if you really don't work, like working into chain stitches, you can just work into the space. 
uh, but then I, I worked into my foundation chain into the skipped stitch. So this is for your row two, single crochet into the next space, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next skipped space. Continue that all the way across until you come to that turning chain two. When you come all the way across at the end of row two, you're going to skip that final stitch. You have your chain two space remaining. And you're going to have chained one and you're going to work your final single crochet into that chain two space. It's really important that you always remember to work your final stitch into this chain two space. So if you need to place a stitch marker, uh, just to remind you that it's there and that's where you're working that stitch. You're then going to chain two and turn your work. Now for rows three, four, five, and six, you're going to repeat that row two. Skip the next stitch into the next chain space, and this time I am working into the chain space. You're going to work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch into your next chain space, work a single crochet all the way across working that final single crochet into the chain two space and uh, chain two turn your work and repeat so you want to work four more rows of the single crochet chain ones at the end of your row six we're going to switch to our color b and i will show you how to do that when i come across At the end of your row six, you're going to want to switch to your color B. I'm going to switch to this green color here. It's a little bit lighter than the black and easier for you to see. When you come to the end, you'll have your one stitch remaining in your chain two space, chain one. You're going to insert your hook into that chain two space, yarn over and drop a loop as you would for the single crochet. You can then, however, drop your color A, pick up your color B and place it on your hook. Some people will use a slip stitch and then you're going to pull it through. You can then chain two and turn your work. At this time, I did fasten off, from when I worked my blanket, fasten off that color A. And you can either weave in your ends right away or later on. You're then for the next three rows, so row seven, eight, and nine, work in your color B and work three more rows of single crochet stitches and chain ones repeating row two just as you did before. At the end of row nine, you're going to switch back to your color A. At the end of row nine, you're going to finish off with a single crochet in that chain two and this time switch back to your color A and fasten off your color B. Chain two and turn your work. Now for rounds 10 through to 30, so for a total of 20 more rows, you're going to work uh, repeat row two. So to work 20 rows in your color A. At the end of your row 30, at the end of the 20 rows in your color A, you're going to repeat the pattern. So you're going to repeat rows 7 through to 30 for a total of 9 more times. 
So each time you're going to have uh, 20 rows worked in your color A, followed by three rows worked in your color B, and you're going to repeat that nine times. Once you have done that, you're going to repeat uh, rows seven to nine once more, and then you're going to end off with six rows in your color A. If you need to, head over again to richtexturescrochet.com. You'll find the free written instructions there, which will give you the row counts for the moss stitch. But you're going to go ahead and finish off those repeats, which will give you the size of your blanket. And then you're going to meet me back here, and we're going to finish off our blanket with some surface slip stitching. And I'll show you how to do that at that time. Now once you finish the repeats in your blanket pattern, you'll then be ready to work the vertical rows. Now again, I've just worked a swatch here just to kind of give you an idea of how it works. Um, and uh, your blanket will be about 48 by 52 inches or the size that you desired. At this time, you're then going to work some surface slip stitches, which are going to make up our vertical rows. What you're going to do is taking your color B, I made a slip knot and then counting in uh, about five stitches from the edge so one two three four and five you're going to join your yarn just at the bottom in the foundation chain and just join it with a slip stitch you're then going to work a surface slip stitch all the way across the length of your blanket. To work the surface slip stitch, you're going to simply skip the next stitch, going from the bottom of the stitch up to the top or vice versa, depending on which direction you're headed. Insert your hook, wrap the yarn around the hook down at the bottom, pull through and up through the loop on your hook just like so and you're going to continue that working over each stitch all the way around along now the moss stitch makes it very easy to see your rows so you want to make sure that you're always working in the same row and just working those surface slip stitches all the way across once you come across you can fasten off and then go down to the bottom and repeat that once again. So you'll have these loops here on the top. This is what your back looks like. It's just a single thread all the way across, but continue working all the way up. Now in between, I worked two rows of surface slip stitches close together for uh, each kind of stripe. And then I skipped about 22 stitches. I kind of just eyeballed it, uh, making sure that they were all kind of the same distance apart. Um, skipped 22 stitches and then worked another vertical row of surface slip stitches and just did that for as many stripes as I wanted running vertically along my blanket. So then once you've worked all of your rows, that is it. That's all there is to working the wicker throw. So if you happen to make this blanket, I look forward to seeing it. Again, go ahead and grab that free written pattern on richtexturescrochet.com. And I look forward to seeing you again soon for another great free crochet pattern tutorial. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.